Hey folks, I'm Lance Eaton, and in this video we are going to cover five tips for the executive team in higher ed to be thinking about in how they use artificial generative artificial intelligence. So, let's get started. We've got a lot to cover, and these are our main objectives. We're going to go through these quickly, but there's so many helpful resources and follow-ups that you want to check out on that resources document. It includes tips, prompts, outputs, so many things for you to explore, to return to, to actually utilize. And I can't stress this enough, this, this resource is everything you need to get started after this talk. So it's also covered by a Creative Commons license, which means you're welcome to use it, adapt it, reshare it with others. So our first focus is to actually think about how we might use this in the context of our work. What are the things we need to bring to how we think about using this tool at our respective institutions? I know that leadership is already inundated with so many things that one more thing just feels too much, but I don't think this is one thing you can let go by. Many institutional leaders have already been too hesitant to really encourage and think about generative AI over the last 15 months, and I think that's hurting a lot of folks throughout the institution from the conversations that I've had with thousands of faculty and staff since its emergence. Yes, leadership needs to lead and while also learning and getting comfortable with the role of AI in education for the foreseeable future. I know folks want to compare uh, generative AI to the MOOC movement, but this is different and you do need to lead into it. I know there's so many other things to do, but this definitely has to be one of them. So what does this look like? It means figuring out the contours in different parts of the institution. Not only what are students feeling about it, what are they actually learning about it? And where is it going to be showing up in their work? With faculty, there's three times as many opinions and ideas as there are faculty, meaning that there's lots of complexity and nuance. And it's not that you have to know every argument and opportunity, but you need, to, you need a richer understanding of what it is. And so much is being taken up around the classroom space that most institutions are completely missing the considerations about AI tools for staff and administrative work. Finally, there's considering what is going to be the institutional lens on AI and its impact throughout the institution. That leads us into the fact that as a leader, you're going to have to use it and get familiar with its use. It's a simpler technology to start to use and having some sense of it can help. To that end, think about your own communities of practice for getting up to speed with it. Across the institution within your leadership team, create some, some communities of practice. Find means of sharing what the changes are and the updates and figure out where your institution can seize these tools as an opportunity and where they should push back, where they should actually put up a boundary. And then come up with a plan for teaching and learning, but also consider how does the implications of AI support or challenge your institutional mission? Trust me, it's likely to do, to do both. Can you clearly speak to that? And there are no clear answers, but keep some attention on what these tools mean for higher education. They can mean a lot of different things. So being ready to dive into the conversation with an informed and reflective answer will be needed by everybody. Okay. But how are we using it now, or how might we be using it soon? Of course, if we're going to bring that framework to our campuses, we have to get familiar and comfortable with generative AI. To that end, we have to be playing with it and, yeah, just getting comfortable with it. And so we've got this low-hanging fruit that can get you started. This might include using generative AI to produce date listings or drafting initial communications you plan to send out. It can also be used to refine or repurpose content more quickly or for different audiences. For instance, speeches. You often have to give a talk and you often have to customize it to particular audiences. This can help you do that. As you get settled into using it, there are some more things that I think is where it really gets interesting. You can use it to draft projects and plans. You can also use it to review and abstract information from articles and books and the like to get salient points. You can also use it to engage in hypotheticals and both evaluate and get feedback on decisions. Finally, you can do it you can do things that might be surprising depending on the size of your institution. You might be able to get general or even specific insights about your institution depending on what you're looking for. It can also be used more robustly across a team of leaders, say, who might be crafting a larger project such as a strategic plan or an accreditation report. And then finally, it can be helpful in data analysis. So what does it look like to use these tools with 
other people in your institution. First up, using AI to update different staff policy, create report outlines, and review and critique project plans are just a handful of things that you can start doing with AI. From there, you can also use it to start to review research and data to more quickly draw out ideas for application. It can also provide more nuanced feedback or, per, uh, uh, or performance reviews when you, or, you know, when you yourself don't have time to deliver a more well-worded uh, commentary. And of course, using it to get drafts of presentations can also get you moving along. Then, of course, we get more robust uses. For instance, leverage it to provide different analysis of decisions or strategies to get a fuller understanding of impact. Also, leaders can use it to identify and develop benchmarks with other comparative institutions. Finally, with the rise of AI bots, you can create strategic advisors uh, that are bots that can use different sources, such as your strategic plan, your strategic plan, and institutional mission to provide timely and critical insight about different questions and pathways you're creating in your role. Okay, but what are the practices we want to encourage and discourage as we use generative AI? Particularly because we're early in understanding all the implications of these tools, there's a few things to keep in mind. Step into the conversation if you haven't yet on your campus and beyond. Continue to try different things. In the guide, you'll see lots of different prompts to try out. Collect as many use cases as you can to help you think through how to best use it. Along those lines, try different tools to learn the contours of AI across the different areas of use. Document your usage, meaning make sure you keep track of what you're doing with it. This is helpful for your own development as well as for folks you work with that you want to encourage usage. And of course, you always want to note when you're using it. It doesn't have to be perfect, but indicating that you're using AI in any kind of work is important to do, particularly for academic institutions, but just in general for us to start to understand the lines and how we represent or speak to those lines. Okay, but what should you not do? Don't ignore it or dismiss it. Along those lines, don't think about it solely as a classroom issue. That will be such a missed opportunity, such a missed consideration in all of this. And it goes without saying, but double check the outputs. Uh, make sure whatever you use it for, it still represents the institutional voice and soul. And don't put any individual or institutional data in without an institutional agreement with an AI tool uh, from IT and IT saying these are the types of things that are okay, that are private or aren't allowed to be public that you can put in there. All right, so now let's take a look at a couple different prompts to see how this can be helpful in your work. Uh, the following are four areas that I can find that I find to be incredibly useful in the ways that AI can contribute to my work and reduce the amount of time I need to work on things. One thing to note here is that I'm going to be I'm going to briefly show and talk about each prompt under these categories. What follows is several screens with lots of text. Don't race to read it all. That's not the goal. Rather, I just want to, I just want you to get a sense of what its inputs and outputs are. All the prompts and even the responses from Generative AI can be found in the resource document along with the other prompts. So check that out in the description. The next slides are just to give you a flavor. So AI can be a great task minimizer, not necessarily eliminating a task, but significantly reducing it. In this case, I asked, I, I attached a report on the biotech industry in Massachusetts and asked it to provide insights and implications for a chief academic officer at a community college. Here, it provides some key considerations about what is happening and implications for community college over the next six months to two years, right? So rather than having to go through that entire report, I can have it analyze the report and actually give me some feedback about things to be thinking about. And in that particular context of a community college in Massachusetts. When it comes to brainstorming, AI can definitely can, can identify a range of things that you might not have thought of and therefore extend your thinking about what you might do or how you might do it. I took one of the ideas from the previous prompt, right, the thing that we were just looking at, and asked it to generate strategies to position the community college as a leader in biotech educational spaces. Here, it provided me with different strategies and goals. Again, I can always ask for more examples and details with each of these, but right off the bat, it gave me ideas around academic alliances, it gave me quick wins, long-term goals, a really good mixture of things that I could pursue if I wanted my institution to become this. 
Now, I'm asking for a specific strategy that focuses on the community college becoming a, a developing hub for biotech professional and career development over the next two years, right? And so what I'm asking for is to provide a first draft. Um, and what I really love about this is it can get me that first draft, which can be incredibly useful and rather than me trying to stare at a black, blank screen, which can be, you know, for some of us, very intimidating or just take a lot of time to start to put things on, you know, put things together. And so as you can see here, quarter by quarter, it highlights the actions to take. Again, I can ask it to change things and add more details or change its approach, but this is all done in seconds, not minutes and hours. So I've already started to get this really rich, interesting uh, plan that I can be thinking about and be, be offering for sharing for feedback from others. And then finally, data analysis. The thing is, most of us can do this. And also, there's so much to do that AI can help us process things a bit more quickly uh, so we can do something with the analysis. Uh, and that feels like a win. So in this case, I had a bunch of staff data that I wanted to analyze uh, to provide insights and compare with benchmarks for comparative institutions, right? And just to note the data that I have here, I completely, I, I actually had AI create the fake data. So I'm dealing with fake data. So whatever the results are, please ignore them. They're strictly there for me to do this as an exercise of, or as an example. And so sure enough, it provided me with a range of de details to consider about faculty. Um, and so I really find this uh, particularly powerful in that I could, first of all, have it create random data that I could play around with, but then also have it analyze that data and give me some interesting insights that would potentially have me thinking about what does it mean for our institution that these are the, this is how and who our, our staff and community are. Okay, one final bonus tip. Uh, if you want to improve your prompting, if you've gone to generative AI and you've tried it and you're like, this isn't much, you're asking the wrong question. The first question to ask is always, always asking it to improve your prompt. So in this case, I will usually go to generative AI, be it ChatGPT or any of these others, and I'll say, improve this prompt to maximize the creativity and analytical abilities of a large language model colon, and then I put in my prompt. The new prompt that it creates is the prompt that I'm going to use, and I always get better results. So basically what I'm doing is I'm going to the generative AI and I'm saying, hey, you're a generative AI. Here is a prompt that I have. Make it better for how generative AI works. And so it gives me something that has more robust language and context and the like. And of course, I'll edit it. There'll be things that it may miss or not get, but it gives me a lot more that I can use with generative AI and get better results. All right, so those are my five tips. Uh, we've covered a lot. I hope this is useful and interesting. Again, check out the resources in the description below. Uh, and if you have questions, you have comments, you tried things out, you want to uh, give a sense of, of how this worked, please put them in the comments below. Always appreciate it. And thank you so much.